So we presented a, a meta-analysis of sorafenib-induced serious adverse event and fatal adverse event in patients with solid cancer who were treated with sorafenib versus control. The control group could be either placebo alone or a chemotherapy and the intervention group was either sorafenib alone or chemotherapy plus sorafenib. So we, we basically tried to see how excess number of patients suffer serious adverse event or fatal adverse event uh, with the use of sorafenib. And uh, we found that uh, we found a total number of 12 phase 3 RCTs. Uh, and uh, from 12 phase 3 RCTs, we found uh, uh, around 6,790 patients uh, who fit our eligibility criteria. And uh, our finding was basically with respect to serious adverse event, the, the risks increased uh, significantly. And the relative risks of uh, getting serious adverse event with sorafenib was one point, uh, around 1.5, 1.49. So, so this is a highly increase uh, in the risks of uh, uh, serious adverse event. Uh, but uh, although uh, this is a significant increase in risk. If we see it in terms of absolute number, the absolute incidence of serious adverse event with sorafenib uh, was uh, around 27%. And uh, this should be compared with around 17% for the control group. So, so uh, there is a significant increase in the risk of uh, sorafenib, uh, in the risk of serious or fatal adverse event with the use of sorafenib. Uh, but there is also some risk uh, in the control group as well. So this helps us in making an informed risk benefit ratio judgment uh, for a patient while starting on sorafenib. We need, to, we need to tell the patient clearly that, okay, this, this uh, drug will give you uh, around this much month of uh, benefit in progression for survival or overall survival, depending on the cancer. But you will also have uh, this much uh, uh, risks uh, in getting serious adverse event or uh, out of 100 patients nearly 27 patients get serious adverse event and serious adverse event is a, is a very important uh, factor in making treatment uh, decision because uh, while, while we usually start our patients on, on any drug we talk about very common side effects like if you if you, in case of sorafenib uh, you will have uh, rashes uh, hand foot syndrome and uh, about hypothyroidism uh, so we we concentrate on, on those things while making an informed uh, consent with the patient but we do not talk about what exactly the incidence of serious adverse event and serious adverse event is important because it includes uh, like uh, risks of hospitalization, risks of uh, uh, losing, uh, risks of I mean being uh, physically handicapped, uh, such things that are of prime importance to the patient. But we we, we frequently ignore this while 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 uh, consenting the patient. So so this data will be very important uh, for the patient uh, to make uh, a decision of whether or not to accept the treatment. And uh, fatal adverse event, uh, we define it usually as mm, the cases of treatment-related mortality. Of course, uh, there are other causes of cancer death, but uh, we are interested in how many patients die due to the treatment and not due to the disease itself. So, so this is another, another uh, data of utmost importance to a patient. Uh, and uh, we found in our meta-analysis that uh, the risk increases very significantly. And the relative risk uh, ratio was 1.84, which is a very, very significant uh, increase in the risk. But again, Again, this needs to be looked uh, in context of the absolute increase in, in, in the incidence of the uh, fatal adverse event. So in the control group, they had 0.7% incidence of fatal adverse event. But in the sorafenib group, we found 1.4%. So it's, it's nearly, nearly double. Uh, so even if you are not taking sorafenib, there is still a chance of uh, having a fatal adverse event of 0.7% incidence. But uh, if you are taking sorafenib, the, the incidence goes to 1.4% and the risk increases by a factor of 1.8. And uh, this is a, another important data for a, for a patient uh, uh, to understand that he could die from the drug itself. Uh, so, uh, uh, and of course we, we did uh, subgroup analysis and we did a uh, test of heterogeneity to see if one particular cancer type of patient has this risk and other cancer type doesn't have and uh, it did not differ according to the, to the, to the cancer types. So um, overall uh, this risk is increased. In a cancer patient, uh, while, while undertaking uh, treatment with sorafenib, he needs to understand these things. And until now, there was, there was no clear, clear data on, on exactly how many patients die because of the uh, treatment. So I think this will form an important part in, in, in having a discussion with the patient. We, we usually try to focus on, on the benefit of the drug 
rather than the, than the side effect. And even when we are talking about side effect, we usually focus on the common side effect. And, and that is very understandable because uh, the, the common side effects of fatigue or, or, or hand foot reaction, uh, allergies, those are important because they, they give a significant morbidity to the patient. Uh, it, uh, it feels very bad to have fatigue every day uh, when you wake up. But, but uh, there is another part of side effect that is SAE, serious adverse event and FAE, fatal adverse event, which are of like uh, grave importance because it is related to being hospitalized or, or, or dying. So, uh, but uh, during the treatment uh, discussion with the patient, we usually don't talk about uh, uh, fatal adverse event uh, because uh, we we tend to believe more on the on the on the efficacy side of the of the of the drug, but I think these things should be should be clearly told to the patient uh, while having an informed consent.